one. Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather today at this Eucharistic celebration to be nourished in word and sacrament. As we approach the table of the Lord, let us come with humble and contrite hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather together each and every week to be humbled by our God, to focus our gaze and attention on him and the many ways in which God calls us to a transformation of our lives and our hearts. Let us pause for a moment to prepare for these sacred mysteries then by calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you took the lowest place among us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give seats of honor to the poor. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offer humility to those who, who seek wisdom. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the i 
Let us pray. God of might and giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs. An attentive, an, an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 1157, 1157. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just shall rejoice at the presence of God, they shall exalt with glad rejoicing. O oh, sing to God, make music to God's name. The Lord is his name. God, in your godness, you have made a home for the poor. Father of orphans, defender of widows, such is God in his holy place. 
God gives the desolate a home to dwell in. God leads the prisoners forth into prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. You poured down, O oh God, a generous rain. When your people languished, you restored their inheritance. It was there that your flock began to dwell. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. What you have come to do is nothing known to the senses, not a blazing fire or a gloom or total darkness, or a storm or trumpet blast, or a sound of the voice speaking, which made everyone that heard it beg that no more should be said to them. But you have come to his Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, where the millions of angels have gathered for the festival with the whole church of the firstborn souls, sons, enrolled as citizens of heaven. You have come to God himself, the supreme judge, and to the spirits of the upright who have been made perfect to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to purifying blood, which pleads more instantly than Abel's. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke on a sabbath jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading pharisees and the people there were observing him carefully he told a parable to those who had been invited noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, 
Invite the poor, the cripple, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. My great-grandma recounts a pretty incredible story. I remember growing up, and she shared with me what, it was, what life was like growing up on the farm near the town of Aaron, Wisconsin. She shared with me a particular story that really was, was kind of a neat wartime story that I'm going to share with you today. She, she shared with me the fact that um, she remembers as a young person growing up on the farm during the war. And it wasn't very far from the house that they grew up in where there was located a prisoner of war camp, a POW camp, for the soldiers that had been captured at wartime and sent to the country here um, to live. And, and not only were they asked to live in the POW camps, but they were also invited, uh, they were required to serve in the fields as well. The canning companies in that area would hire them as cheap labor and uh, send them out into the fields for a long day's work, harvesting the various crops that were growing during high, uh, that were needed to be harvested after the growing season. And one of the there was a particular field next to my great grandmother's house that she grew up in that had a ton of beets in it, and this particular beet field was ready for harvest, and so all of the prisoners of war came to this beet field to harvest all of these beets, and they began to put in a long day's work, and lunchtime rolled around, and oftentimes the men would just sit um, along the side of the field in the burning hot sun. But my great-grandmother remembers her own mother going out to these prisoners of war, and she remembers her mother inviting these POW prisoners to come into their yard and to sit underneath the shade trees that she had in her yard so that they would be more comfortable. And, and my great-grandma's mom even took things one step further, and she would prepare meals for these POWs. She would prepare a soup or give them milk or cheese or whatever they had from their own surplus. She was willing to give to these POWs what they had. And so it was, it was always fascinating to me that my great-grandma would often tell this story to us younger people. And I think she, she carried this little bit of wisdom around in her heart because she recognized the value of work. She recognized not only the value of work, but the way in which work not only um, allows us and invites us to participate in the creative nature of God, but it also helps us to recognize our own human value. We gather together on this Saturday evening right before we acknowledge Labor Day on Monday. And I think it's, a, it's an appropriate reading that we reflect on today because the readings, all of them today, the first, the second, and our gospel reading, all invites us to reflect on what true humility looks like. What humility is supposed to be in our world, I would venture to say is drastically different at times than what humility looks like in reality. We look around our, our world today and we, we sometimes, I think, can get carried away with this, um, this need for success in our culture, to allow our culture to define what true success is. And I think oftentimes we look at our jobs as that defining factor. That work that we enter into helps to define me as a person. Whether or not that work is at a job or at school, that is what becomes my defining factor. But the teachings of the Catholic Church are very clear. You see, it is not the work that we do that defines our human dignity. But rather, human dignity is something that is already deeply rooted in our nature. It is just by the very fact that we are human beings, that we are held to a higher dignity than anything else in the entire world. 
and that God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to save us and to be that perfect example of what it means to be a humble person. And so when we look at our life and we sometimes wonder what true humility looks like, we only need to look at one spot. We look at the cross. Because Jesus Christ gives us that perfect example of what it means to be a humble person. And so we take that image of the cross and we apply it into our own lives. We say, when am I experiencing that sense of humility? When am I living out that humility? Have I been? Have I been willing, uh, willing to make those sacrifices? Have I humbled myself in such a way that the needs of others are being placed before my own? Have I been willing to make sure that if I am in a position of authority, whether or not that means at work or at home, am I using that position of authority to raise the dignity of those people around me up? Or am I the type of person that works really hard at tearing them down so that I might be the one to receive the glory. My dear brothers and sisters, our reflection this week is simple. And I don't, I don't reflect on this as a gloom and doom preacher because you guys know I'm not that way. But I think it's important for us to take a moment to pause and to reflect on the many ways in which God has placed in our hearts that inherent dignity as human beings and to reach out to those who are less fortunate than we are, those who maybe have, have not had that same sense of dignity that we have been privileged to receive. And so as we approach this Labor Day, we not only reflect on the work that we are called to as men and women, as, as believers in God, but we also reflect on those who have that same calling and have not been able to respond in the same way that you and I have been able to respond in. And so we make sure that we as Christians are continually reaching out, being that good example for the world, so that the world may recognize that it isn't the work that we do, it isn't the level of work that we perform that defines us, but rather it is God who defines us. It is our relationship with God and the holiness that he has called each one of us to that helps to define who we are as a person. And so let us take a moment this week as we reflect on Labor Day, as we reflect on the wonderful work that God has called each one of us to, to pause for a moment, to make a difference in the lives of those around us, to make sure that the work that we enter into is always building up the kingdom of God so that the world around us may be a more peaceful place, may be a place of productivity and love, and may be a place that continually reflects the goodness that God has called each one of us to work for. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stand and offer our prayers of petition. Uh, before we do that, though, <laughs> we're going to do our creed, okay? Uh, we'll offer our creed as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us acknowledge God as the source of all that is good, and with humble hearts offer our prayers for the needs of the church and those of the whole world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, that by our humility we may show the face of Christ to the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the government policies support and protect <clears throat> manufacturing efforts and jobs in our own country, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That communities and corporations strive to create decent jobs with adequate pay, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For students returning to school, for teachers, and for families as the new school year begins, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Jewish people as they observe their New Year celebration of Ros, Ros Hasana later this week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Martin Klaprick, Leonard Musick, Leander Stenz, and Margaret Waskow, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Jake Shaneborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I also ask that you offer your prayers for Father Quentin Heck, a priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee who passed away. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and generous God, we offer you these prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts and we ask that you answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 679, Center of My Life, 679. center of my life I will always praise you I will always serve you I will always keep you in my sight keep me safe oh God I take refuge in you I say to the Lord you are my God my happiness lies in you alone my happiness lies in you alone oh lord you are the center of my life i will always praise you i will always serve you i will always keep you in my sight I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. O Lord, you are the center of my life, I will always praise you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even in safety shall my body rest, for you will not leave my soul among the dead nor let your beloved no decay. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, and you have arranged the changing of the times and seasons. You formed mankind in your own image, and you set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the whole world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is now. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Just a few quick announcements for you this evening before we go our separate ways. Come on, you want to give announcements? <laughs> Come on, you can sit right up here. Right here. I got a spot for you. She's not quite sure. It's much like the homily. With Big chair, big, big chair, you have big shoes to fill, so. <laughs> tomorrow, as you know, with, um, with Labor Day upon us, we have the 8 a.m. Mass. It's an outdoor Mass tomorrow at St. Peter's. So we invite everyone to uh, join us out at St. Peter's for the outdoor Mass. That's Monday. Oh, tomorrow's Sunday. Yeah. That's right. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> See. I'll be moving over to that chair. That's right. Uh, Thank you. Mass. Thanks. <laughs> all, this, uh, all this talk about working and, you know, doing a good job has just got me flustered, so I'm not able to... All right. Well, we'll do this Monday then. Monday at St. At, uh, Peter's, 8 a.m. Mass for Labor Day. There will be no 7 a.m. Mass at Sacred Heart on Monday, but um, we invite you to join us for any of the Masses tomorrow. You're welcome to come back, so... Um, we just especially welcome all of our guests from out of town, so I've noticed some unfamiliar faces in the, in the congregation today, but we just thank God for your presence here among us, and uh, we welcome you to Fond du Lac, and we're thankful that you chose to be a part of our community today, but we know that you have many other options to choose from, and we're thankful that you are here with us to pray and worship God today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless each of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom, 734.